Let's do another example. Um, this time we're, we're going to go with a slightly more complicated function, right? Um, we did the exponential function last time. So it may, may be a little bit too easy because, you know, we don't have to do any work to compute the derivatives. I've done the first four derivatives here just to get us started, right? Um, and obviously there's a little bit more work involved than there was for the exponential function. But we might also notice that these derivatives, if we're looking carefully, they follow a bit of a pattern, right? Um, so we look and we see what kind of patterns can we see. Um, ignoring the first one, let's look down here. We notice that we have positive, negative, positive, negative, right? The signs alternate. And you can kind of see that the signs are going to keep alternating because the minus signs are coming from these exponents coming down from the power rule, right? So every time the exponent comes down, we're going to get another minus sign because the exponent's getting more and more and more negative, right? Um, also, every time we take a derivative, we're multiplying by the next biggest number, right? So when we get to the fifth derivative, we're going to multiply by minus 4. So the minus sign goes away. And now we have 2 times 3 times 4, which is 4 factorial, right? 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial. So this is this kind of idea of you're looking for these patterns, right? You, so, and you might have to sit and think about this for a while, but eventually you work out that, OK, um, once I've done k derivatives, OK, well, I'm going to have an x to the minus k, right? Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Um, and we have that factorial in front. OK? But it, it's one less than the exponent, right? k minus 1 factorial with a k there, right? It's always one less. But there's one thing missing, right? What's missing? I'm missing a sine factor. How do I account for that sine factor? Well, the standard way we do this is we use powers of minus 1, right? An even power of minus 1, we're multiplying by 1 an even number of times, it's going to be positive. Odd number of times, negative, OK? So we say, OK, can we just do minus 1 to the k, multiply by minus 1k times? Well, we look at this and we say, that doesn't quite work, right? Because Look, it's positive here when k is odd. It's negative here when k is even, right? Um, and that's going to give me the wrong sign. So I could put another minus sign out front, um, or we just shift this exponent, either add or subtract 1. Um, doesn't really matter, but maybe you like this to match that k minus 1 factorial. So we put the k minus 1 out front, OK? And now that means that when we put x equal to 1, OK, um, well, let's just do this for now, put the denominator in soon. We've got minus 1 to the k minus 1 times k minus 1 factorial times 1 to the minus k. And of course, 1 to any power is just 1. So what we have here is just minus 1 to the k minus 1 times k minus 1 factorial. OK. But we know that when we, when we set up our Taylor polynomial, we're going to divide by k factorial, right? So if we do k derivatives, evaluate at 1, divide by k factorial, we've got minus 1 to the k minus 1, k minus 1 factorial over k factorial. OK, now that simplifies, right? Think about what you've got there. Um, k minus 1 factorial over k factorial, this is 1 times 2 times 3, and so on up to k minus 1. On the bottom is 1 times 2 times 3, and so on up to k minus 1, and then times k, right? So pretty much everything cancels, right? The twos cancel, the threes cancel, the fours cancel, the k minus ones cancel. Uh, all you're left with here is 1 over k. So what we get is minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k, right? And of course, you could also, you know, if you didn't see that, you can do it by plugging in x equals 1. 
look at the pattern for, for, F, for the derivatives evaluated at 1, and then go from there. OK. So that means that our degree n Taylor polynomial is going to look like this. Now remember that because we're doing this at 1, we're not going to expand it in powers of x like we did for the Maclaurin polynomial. We're going to expand in powers of x minus 1. Okay? So um, f of 1, what's f? f of 1 is 0, right? Log of 1 is 0. So we start with 0 plus um, f prime is 1 times x minus 1, f double prime minus 1 times x minus 1 squared, right? Then plus 1, oh, sorry, 1 half there, right? Minus 1 from here, but then we had to divide by the, by the 2 factorial, so minus 1 over 2, right? And then 1 third, right? Because we have that 2 factorial over 3 factorial leaves me with the 1 third, x minus 1 cubed, and so on, right? Minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k times x minus 1 to the k. There's your degree n Taylor polynomial. Okay? So now, um, P6 in particular, right? If I want to do approximate the natural log of 1.5, right? I would say, okay, so P6 at 1.5 is going to be. Well, it's going to be 1 times, so 1.5 minus 1 is a half, minus a half times a half squared, plus a third times a half cubed, minus a quarter times a half to the fourth, plus a fifth times a half to the fifth, minus a sixth times a half to the sixth. OK, now, um, if you actually work that fraction out and you simplify, you get it over a common denominator, uh, what you get is 259 over 640, or approximately, what is it going to be? I wrote it down over there, 0 0.4047. Um, and if you compare the, the actual value for the natural log of, of 1.5, if you look it up using your, your calculator, um, you're going to get 0 0.4055. Not bad. Accurate to two decimal places. We're only off by one in the third decimal place. Seems okay. All right? Now, um, if you go ahead and you calculate um, P6 at 2, well, then those powers of 1 half, they disappear, right? You're just going to have 1, it's just going to be 1, because we're going to do powers of 1, right? 2 minus 1 just gives me 1 So we get that, okay? And so this works out to 37 over 60, or approximately 0 0.6167. Okay, and you might hope that hey, we're gonna we're gonna get this great approximation again, um, but this time, well, the best we do is the first decimal place. Okay, the actual value. 6931. Actually, I guess if you round, you don't even have the first decimal place, right? Um, so that's not very good, right? So again, we see that even, even once you go to like a higher degree polynomial, it might still happen that as your delta x grows, right, as the change in x grows, um, the error in using these to approximate, it's going to grow with the size of delta x. And depending on the function, it might grow faster or slower. Um, for the exponential function, it's actually not that bad. Um, as you add more and more terms, your approximation um, gets pretty good pretty fast. The natural log, it turns out, and we'll, we'll see this if we look at some other, some other sort of analysis techniques, um, 
the natural log takes a really, really, really long time um, to give you a good approximation once you go out to, to two or further out. Um, even if we went to like 100 terms, we still wouldn't be all that satisfied with our approximation. Um, so things really depend on the function for these Taylor polynomial approximations.